All right, we are back with Off the Press. Uh, I'm James Berger with the Bakersfield Californian, and uh, we have Russell Johnson, a government affairs uh, consultant here in the, the in Bakersfield, and Nicole Parra, a faculty at Cal State Bakersfield, former city council member, former assemblywoman, and of both, course we have... And both of us are still professional troublemakers. Yeah. So. <laughs> As am I. And, and former principal. And former principal. <laughs> Highland <laughs> High grad. And, and, and our guest. Okay, go Highland. Okay, there you go. And, go and our, uh, our uh, guest is Lee Vasquez, uh, who is, uh, as we found out uh, during the break, on special assignment uh, to recruit teachers for the current high school right. district at this time mm-hmm. through December. So... Uh, Tell us more about uh, what the next few months hold as you try to do that and mm-hmm. run for office at the same time. Right. Uh, you know, I, I do have a, a job that I have to go to, so that's kind of uh, been really uh, uh, balancing and, and, and getting those two uh, to where they don't conflict. Uh, and that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Uh, we're doing a lot of fundraising going on. We do have our Facebook up right now, Lee Vasquez for with the, with the number four for trustee. Uh, so go to the Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're going to be having uh, some fundraisers uh, next week, okay. uh, and it's just been fun. I've I've never done this. I'm a political science major. And I'm a government teacher, so okay. I was a government <laughs> teacher. So here we are. You know, we're really doing things that we used to teach, and it's just been a, a, a kick. Uh, the the big, biggest problem we're facing right now is just the the recognition. I, I, a lot of people, uh, and I will say, I'm not saying that to, to brag. A lot of people on in East Bakersfield know the Vasquez name and and what we've done uh, in the community. Uh, just letting people know that we're out there, that we mm-hmm. did uh, get on the ballot, and we are uh, running, and that uh, we'd appreciate their support. So you're, you're a special project uh, recruiter for the current high school district. I'm going to get kind of into education issues. So you're recruiting teachers. There's, I, I didn't, I, I hear mixed things. I hear, oh, there's too many teachers. There's not enough. There's too many in the, in like the social sciences, but there's not enough in the STEM. Where are, where is our education shortfalls in terms of teachers mm-hmm. and where do we really need them? And how are you plugging that gap? Well, I can tell you that the Kern High School District hired almost 200 teachers this year. Uh, and that's that's amazing, and we're continually uh, uh, predicting that that is going to kind of be the same for the few years to come. Uh, the, the the shortages are in math, English, uh, special education. Uh, th- those positions uh, are are always in demand, and we're always looking for those teachers. Science is really really getting difficult uh, to find, uh, also, and so we're beginning to broaden our our, our net to see if we can go ahead and, and, and bring in more teachers and going to colleges that we traditionally don't go to, uh, maybe some of the more private colleges out there, uh, North and South California. Uh, we're talking more to the colleges here that are producing our teachers. And we're really wanting to develop a closer relationship so we can, we can call that dean of education and say, you know, we're looking for a, a math teacher. Who do you recommend? And, you know, because it's not like that right now. And it's, uh, that's probably throughout the nation, too. Uh, uh, and so we're having to be more aggressive in how we, we uh, recruit those teachers. And, and so that's why we're doing this. Quick question, Russell. Whoa. Um, is that um, I've always wondered, what's the outreach regarding people who are near retirement mm-hmm. in our oil, in our science fields here mm-hmm. from Kern County? I mean, I see a lot of teacher recruitment. And my mm-hmm. actually, my sister-in-law was from Iowa. She mm-hmm. was recruited to come to Bakersfield because it was next mm-hmm. to the beach. But a lot of these <laughs> folks, after a year, they'll leave. Right. Um, she did not. Obviously, she married right. my brother. But, you know, I, I just said there's such a wealth of knowledge and folks who are not really ready to retire. <laughs> you know, they want to do something for, you know, five or maybe even 10 years. What's the effort to recruit some of the folks from Chevron or ARCO or, you know, CRC or in our communities pre-retirement? Is right. there, what is right. the effort there at the current high school You district? know, we're looking at, at those individuals now and, and, and recruiting them with special credentials to bring them on our campuses right. so that they can, with their wealth of knowledge that they have, they really do kind of mm-hmm. already are credentialed because right. they, they have that body of knowledge. And so we're really looking at those individuals also. Uh, so those is there a special credentialing? I yeah, mean, you can. So th- yeah. there is a, right. a pipeline. And so, yeah, and, and you, know, you can contact our Human Resources mm-hmm. Division. They can mm-hmm. tell you what's available. Right. Or, or pretty much most principals will be able to discuss that too. Mm-hmm. It is a, a situation that's really interesting because – as you know, the current high school district is really becoming more and more involved in career tech. Mm-hmm. 
and and finding those those individuals who have actual knowledge of, of you know how to how to run these machines these businesses uh, it's really difficult and if we can get them from private industry we certainly are looking at that right now too so um, I was at a KEDC meeting recently and Christine Frazier talked about how she's seen a lot of success with uh, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools recruiting from mm -hmm. people who were laid off with the downturn in oil mm -hmm. um, and I guess mine's a two-part question. One, are you seeing success? Are those people coming to you? Mm -hmm. Or are you having to go after them? And then how are you going after them? And the reason why I kind of asked the question is I was over in San Luis Obispo uh, County. I was in Morro Bay, actually. And I missed our second or th and third show, I mm -hmm. think, or fourth and fifth show, because I was over, over there on vacation. And I actually saw a commercial in San Luis Obispo for the San Luis Obispo County of, uh, Office of Education trying to recruit people in retirement mm -hmm. to come out of retirement mm -hmm. and go back to work. Are you guys running TV ads or how are you getting those folks that are maybe yeah, I'm not aware of any TV ads right now, but I think it is getting out there that we are looking at these individuals who are retiring or, or maybe not even retiring, but are wanting to come out of private industry to come into the school sites. We've hired several, uh, uh, quality individuals that I, I can see that have come onto our campuses. And, you know, we, we talked a lot about retiring, but the, there are individuals that want to come and teach. Um, not everyone in private industry can teach. It's a very, it's, it's a tough job. And you find out that, uh, you know, you, people get into a classroom, you got 35 uh, teenagers there and you lock the door. Well, you don't lock the door, but, you know, you shut the door and you're locked in there with, with 35 teenagers now and you got to teach them. And it's difficult. And, and what worked in private industry doesn't necessarily always translate well into the classroom. So we... Uh, you know, we certainly want to, to encourage those individuals who are thinking about, uh, you know, retiring and, and talking to us about, you know, the possibility of, of getting into the classroom and those who, who aren't close to retiring but, you know, have these, these skills that we may need in the future. And we certainly are open to come conversing with any of those. So, obviously, teacher shortages is a challenge at the district. Mm -hmm. There's been a number of other issues that have come up. Some people will say that our challenge is at the district as well. So let's just take one, for example. Um, you know, you had the issue of the, the lawsuit uh, with the whole chicken suit incident and the incident that occurred at, at, uh, at BHS. I'd be interested in your take as someone who's both been a principal and someone who's worked in the administration at the district office. How do you view that incident? Do you think that incident could have been handled any differently or do you think the, uh, uh, just your thoughts in general? Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you look at a high school campus anywhere in the United States, and you, you have a rally, an assembly, or whatever, uh, as you all know, they can get loud and rowdy, and and uh, you know we don't um, you know we don't wish that what took place at BHS on any school campus, uh, you know, and and I and I honestly believe that that we try to do the best every day to keep our kids safe, and you, you as a parent. At the end of the day, you want your son or daughter to come home safe and, and have had a good day at school. Uh, that's what we want to. We, we are looking at uh, uh, you know, ways to make certain that that happens. And you know, we have learned a lot since that. And I think that what we're doing now you know, in regards to, to rallies and assemblies really has addressed the situation you know, very well. And, and I, I believe that when the Kern High School District sees that, that there may be something that we need to fix, we fix it. And we, we own up to it, and we fix it. And we, we have great men and women working for this school district, uh, and they've devoted their lives to education. That's, that's pretty powerful. And so when we have a, uh, a situation like this that has taken place, we really try to correct it, and we really try to make certain that all the other schools know about it, and they correct it if it's happening on their campuses too. So you, you mentioned the district tries to fix things when they're broken. There's been an allegation or uh, assertion that's been leveled against the district recently that they may not be as transparent as they mm -hmm. should be, uh, whether it was with this whole incident regarding the misuse of Cletus or uh, you now you've got the incident of all these uh, revelations of uh, how the district was using taxpayer dollars on campaigns and all this is kind of coming out. Um, do you, what do you think about the transparency of the district? Do you think it's a problem? Do you think it needs to be addressed? Well, I, you know, that, that's an interesting question. I, I, I think that 
the people that I've worked with over the 30 plus years in, in the Kern High School District are honest, hardworking individuals. And I don't think that they would do anything to jeopardize their careers, much less to break the law. Uh, I do know that we're human and we make mistakes. And, and before we, you know, we ask for somebody's head on a platter, I think that we need to make certain that we, we've done everything that we can to investigate uh, what we've done, if there's anything wrong, and that we've done everything to correct that. Let's bring some reason back into this. What is it that we've done, and if we've made a mistake, let's own up to it and let's fix it. It's not about um, trying to cover up anything or doing anything. We're, we're a huge organization and we're growing. We're a half of, almost a half a billion dollar budget. And wow, that is, that's huge. And, and as we grow, uh, this, this, I believe, are just uh, you know, elements of that growing pains that are taking place. Oh, we did this wrong. We got to fix this. We got to fix this. And now, you know, it may be just where, where we're at a point now where, okay, we've got to stop, bring some, bring some reasonableness back into this, and let's start fixing these things. Um. Through all this that's come up, it, you know, the issue, and actually I think it was heard last night, the issue of, uh, or is it coming up tonight, and maybe it was last night, I know the, the district met recently, about guns on campuses. Mm -hmm. What is your, your take on that? I know there's now a new policy for, for people um, who want to bring on a concealed carry weapon. And I think they just voted on a policy on teachers. I didn't follow it too closely to see what they, they hadn't, no. They were scheduled to initially months ago, but they had pushed it back. I think a lot of the public had thought it was going to be last night. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. And thank you, Harold Pierce, right. uh, <laughs> educational reporter for the California, who I neglected to mention at the beginning because I'm a sap. So, so what is your take on this whole effort to bring uh, guns onto campuses? Well, I, well I'm a gun enthusiast. Uh, I do have a CCW. Uh, I do, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong believer in the Second Amendment, but I'm also a strong uh, believer in in reason. Now, w I believe we need to to sit down and talk about th these things before we, we make these rules and regulations, uh, uh, because I, though I feel that as a gun owner and as a, a CCW a card carrier uh, that I can carry my gun concealed, I'm not trained to deal with an active shooter. I don't know if I would get in the way of a police officer if there was an active shooter uh, on campus. I like to think that I would be able to help and, and be there for them, but these individuals are trained. As a CCW uh, person, I'm not trained with that. I am trained to be able to, to, to carry my weapon mm -hmm. and to be able to, to secure it and put it away. Um, but I, I really believe that we need to bring this back on, onto the table and discuss this a little further before we start making you know, the, these type of decisions, because these are huge decisions, getting people on our campuses with guns. Uh, do I believe that, that there are individuals that could do this very well? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. you know, but right now, I think those people who are trained, in effect, are police officers. They're the ones right now that should have guns on our campuses. And in a perfect world, we would have more officers on mm -hmm. our campuses. Right. And so right. there seems to be at least a willingness um, to have those folks. So is it the policy now? I don't know. In the current high school district, those that can carry guns, they have to go to special training? Obviously, like I'm a gun owner. Mm -hmm. I My students ask me all the time if I mm -hmm. feel that I could protect them and if there was an active shooter. At this point, no. Mm -hmm. But, right. um, and right. I'm not sure how much training I would need to go to the right. Second Amendment and right. get my CCW. But um, is what's the policy now today that there's... I don't believe that there's... I think okay. it was like 80 hours of training they wanted to have, and I think that's been taken off the table. So there's no... Um, I don't think that was even. I think that was discussed briefly during. Yeah, the okay, I don't know. So it's just the yeah. idea. A member of the public who right. had discussed yeah, eighty yeah, hours so. of training through Second Amendment sports, but mm -hmm. uh, there, there's no actual training for right, firearms exactly. handling. Right. Just the CCW permit. If you got exactly. that, you can get it through the superintendent's office. Right. But they haven't really finalized the application okay. process right. yet. There's yeah. still some. So, I, so I'd like to right. see more discussion about Especially that because, training, yeah. um, you know, having a gun on you is a really, really mm -hmm. big responsibility. Uh, and I would hate to be the individual who, who missed when I shot and shot someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have, to, we have to think of all of those scenarios and the what ifs before we make these type of decisions. And I would really like to see law enforcement involved, you know, the sheriff's office, BPD, just to, to pick their brain and to really think what they're, they're thinking about and what some of the, the pitfalls might be of us uh, carrying guns on campus. Uh, and I'd like parents and more parent input. I'd like uh, the teacher input. I think there's, a, there's still a lot of 
questions, and I'd like to make sure we got all those questions out of the way. So we t we just talked a little bit about um, McCall actually brought up. Oh, we need more officers on campus. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the current high school district having its own police force, so to say? That's kind of what they have now, and mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, they're only allowed to enforce the law within a mile of the school. I think is what it is, and mm -hmm. I, that may not be. 100% accurate. So they're kind of limited how far they can go actually mm -hmm. to en enforce their jurisdictional uh, rules. And then I, I also understand they actually have to kind of even turn over some cases to BPD once it goes beyond a certain distance mm -hmm. from the school. So do we need a current high school district police force? I know we have mm -hmm. one now. We've had this issue with the cle misuse of Cletus and the mm -hmm. allegations. Uh, flowing about about that. Do we really need a current high school district police force? Well, full disclosure, about uh, 15, 16 years ago, I was the director of pupil personnel services. Okay. And at that time, I would say yes. And today I would say yes. Uh, we've done studies and, and determined that it might be cost prohibitive if we went through uh, SO or BPD. Uh, I don't know if we were to do it again, if those studies would still hold true. Uh, but I do know that the police officers in the current high school district are all post certified, that they're all trained uh, through through post, and they go through annual trainings uh, for updates in in weapons, uh, control holds, and and just like every other police department. I think it's a tremendous asset for the current high school district to have their own police department. Uh, we have we deal with with issues that other law enforcement agencies may not have time to deal with. We may have you know, drug sales on campus, we may have uh, an assault on campus, we may have all those things that arise on a high school campus throughout the nation, not just the current high school district, uh, that we're able to to work with with our police department. It is it, uh, does it have room to, to improve? Certainly. But these guys, uh, these men and women, they they do their very best to make certain that their their students at their schools are safe and I think parents and I think teachers, administrators and I think the kids really appreciate that we have officers on our campuses. All right, uh, I think we can uh, head a little bit to the break. That's a nice little stopping point. Uh, this is James Berger with the Bakersfield Californian and uh, we are we, uh, off the press this afternoon. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Lee Vasquez.